The following broadcast is brought to you by Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas. For more information about the church, log on to AccelerateChurch.cc. Welcome to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. My name is Jeremy Fowle. I'm the pastor at Accelerate Church in Amarillo, and we want you. We have services every Wednesday at 7 p.m., Sundays at 10 a.m. If you can't be in person at 4400 South Crockett in the beautiful city of Amarillo, then you can stream us at AccelerateChurch.cc. I'm coming to you from the studios here at our church, and I have my friend, Pastor Chip Brim, with me. How are you today? I'm great, Jeremy. How are you, brother? I'm doing good. Good, good, good. Enjoy and by the way, you. if you are in Amarillo, I was just in his church uh, this past Sunday, and it is an amazing church. And if you don't have a home church, come visit. You'll you'll stay, trust me. Hey, I appreciate that. <laughs> we had a good preacher this past Sunday, that's for sure. <laughs> it was Pastor Chip Brim. Now, you pastor over in Collinsville, Oklahoma. Where I grew up. That's right outside of uh, Tulsa, yeah, Oklahoma. Yeah. And if someone wants to find out information on your church or your ministry, what should they do? Well, the church, they can go to agloriouschurch.org, agloriouschurch.org, or champions with an S4 and the number 4, christ.org. And, uh, you know, I'm a pastor and senior pastor and, and still travel. And uh, But for a long time, like, you know, we have talked about uh, previously that uh, I was into baseball and coaching, and, and God called me out of that. and. Yeah, let's talk about are. that for just a minute. So here you are coaching. You mentioned that you won a national championship with Arkansas. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So how do you transition from that to ministry? Like, what happened? Well, uh, you know, when God said, now's the time, and, you know, I'm like, how can I preach? All I know how to do is is coach. And uh, he said, I'm going to – I'll help you train champions for Christ. I'll ch- help. That's where the name came. I'll help you train champions for me because I'm coming back for a champion church. But when I, the transition, when I came from coaching and I went into, uh, you know, the ministry, I was in culture shock, to be honest with you, when I first did. And every guy that I uh, spiritually advised that, that are in sports right now and they're going into ministry, they, they have a little tough time in that transition because you got to imagine you're, you're coming from a, a, an arena and fans and passion and, the, you know, the competition of winning and all of that. And then you get to some churches and it's like cricket, 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 <laughs> cricket. Right. And, and you know, we just came from places where guys are painting on themselves and, you know, they're just going crazy. <laughs> screaming and at you. Screaming <laughs> and the passion. And I thought to myself when I first started, where's that passion? Mm. Show me the passionate Christians. Are they out there? There's passionate fans, yeah, and you know, fan is short for fanatic. We should be fans of God. Yeah, I, I always say, and you were just at my church. You could probably agree. We have a pretty oh. energetic place. Oh, yeah, that's not your church, but well, that's God's church. I'm just happy no, to be the pastor. No, I mean, when I was talking about the, the church and crickets and all that, his church is phenomenal. They're very passionate and on fire. Yeah, forever. well, and one reason is I bring this up a lot. Yeah, I refuse to let someone over a pigskin or a ball going through a hoop right. uh, outpraise me for my God that means more Ooh. to me than their God means to them. Value system. <laughs> so you came out of that, though, where you have radical fans, you got people chanting, you know, yeah. and all that passion, and you come into the church. So how did the Lord help you through that? He well, said, I'll help you. What What did you see? Well, I, I just, I, I wanted to know about, I, where is this passion? And, and you know, honestly... What it is, is um, spirit, soul, and body. The Bible says we're three parts. We have a spirit. That's the inside of us. That's that's the real us. We live in a body. And we can do all kinds of things to our body. We, that's your physical body, what we right. see. We can add on, paint, whatever. <laughs> and then we have a mind or a soul. And my mom's always taught me, whatever you feed the most of the three will dominate the other two. That's good. And so if you've ever been to a funeral, like my dad's funeral, and we're seeing him laying there, well, he's not in there. You can tell. If you ever want to teach spirit, soul, and body, it's at a funeral because we're looking at this corpse. You know, yeah, just, yeah, just dead laying, corpse. And that wasn't him. Yeah. He was a fun-loving guy. He's not there. No, he's not. And so he's somewhere else. He's in heaven. And so when you when you feed your spirit, man, it will dominate the rest of you. And, and 
and your inside, your inner man, the real you will grow. And that's where the passion, how you, how do you feed it? By the word of God. Come and on. the more words you get in, the more passionate you're going to be. Now I'm not talking about fake passion. I don't want you to go and just fake it. Right. I, but, but one time I was preaching this in California and the, and the pastor came up to me and I love him and he loves me and we're still friends. And he said, Chip, I, I don't agree with that. And he said, I don't, I don't believe we all should be like that. We all are different. We have different personalities. And he said the word personality. And then I didn't want to get in an argument or anything. And, and, um, and, and then all of a sudden I began to speak and I knew it wasn't me. It was just like the Lord speaking through me. Yeah. Holy Spirit the, giving you the words. Yeah. And the, cause it was too cool and too smart for me, for it to be me. <laughs> Holy Spirit always makes you look better than <laughs> he, he you really does. are. He does. I'm so thankful for that. <laughs> and he said, he said through me to him, don't let your personality affect your passion. Let your passion affect your personality. Man, that's good. Now, you got to chew on that for a little bit. Yeah. So he said the word personality. That's my personality. We do have different demeanors and personalities, sure. and but we can blame it on them and say, you know, us Johnsons, we love God. I love God. I've loved Him for sixty years. But you forgot to tell your face, right? So, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, you don't. You can read if you if you come from where I came from, playing in front of thousands of fans. You see it in their eyes and their face. You see passion in a little kid when he runs into a toy store or recess on the playground. You see passion when a man goes into a Bass Pro Shop or Cabela's or goes to the golf course or Come fishing. On. You see it when the women g- grab the credit card and go shot. You see, you see it. It's tangible. Yeah. Now, you go to some churches and sometimes you don't see it. Not at your church, not at our church, because right. we've been we've been feeding that spirit and it's just becoming, uh, you know, it's dominating the other two and it's passionate for God and the yeah. things of God. Hey, that's super important what you're saying, Pastor Chip, right here, that you feed your spirit because if you'll do that, yeah. it'll make you sensitive yes. to the voice of the spirit of God because yes. he speaks to you, Brother Hagen, yes. as, as you mentioned yes. yesterday, your mom used to edit a lot of his books for him and work for him. Brother Hagen said it years ago that the number one way God speaks to you is the inner man, your yes, spirit man. Yes. So the more you feed that spirit man, the word of God, yes. uh, and worship and praise and do those type of things, the more sensitive you become to the spirit of God. Is that true? Do you yeah. That? You know, what's funny about that is I read a quote of his that said, it was real funny. He said, uh, there are some pastors that are more sensitive than other pastors. And he went on to say, there were, there's some pastors that wouldn't know the Holy Go- Holy Spirit if it showed up in a big red hat. He was being funny. <laughs> but the, the part that caught me was, not that part, right. the first part, there are some pastors more sensitive than others. And I sat down and I thought, I want to be more sensitive. Mm. I'm a pastor. I want to be more sensitive. God's got a word for these people. God's got, he knows their needs. He, he knows what we don't know. Well, that should be a prayer of all of us. That should be something we all want to be more sensitive to God. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? We've really become, just just because of the time we live in, desensitive, you know, because of Google and the information and everything in our hand, and we don't rely on him on, uh, you know, information. Say, oh, who was that? You, can, I, you and I could be talking about who was that uh, quarterback in 1970, whatever, won the Super Bowl, and we can have it in seconds, right? Yeah. Just by, um, by Googling, voice texting yes. it even, you know. And, and and so I began to practice my sensitivity. I said, well, how can I practice that? Mm, that's good. So I, start, I said, well, uh, I'm not going to go to Google. I'll just say, Holy Spirit, you can tell me. Lord, I, I hear your voice. I'm a son of God. I hear your voice, Come and on. I will know. And you know what? It would start coming quick. It, it, I could do it on my keys, lost keys, wallet, uh, couldn't find something, and I would just stop and go, Lord, you, you know where it is. Therefore, I know where it is. You'll lead me right to it. And, uh, and I practiced that. Now, and, I just uh, want to jump in and say this. There's somebody listening. I believe this. They, they're hearing this, and they're saying there's no way. You actually can hear the voice of God. And the truth is we were created right. to fellowship with him. Right. And we do clog up many times our ears with all kinds of voices right. that make it hard to hear the voice of the Spirit of God. Right. But I just want to say this to whoever that is that maybe heard you say yeah. you could hear the voice of God, that you have scripture for this in John chapter 10. Yes. It says it in verse number 27, Jesus speaking, my sheep hear my voice. There you go. You've got Bible on it. Yeah. My hey, sheep hear my voice. God's a spirit. Yes, he and is. And so the real us is the spirit man, the inner man, the real us, the inside here, this body. And so that's how he communicates with us, right? And so the more we feed that spirit, the more sensitive we are to his voice. Come on. And and I'll just tell you another thing. In sports and and coaching, everybody knows that you have what you say. Even 
Sports psychologists know this. Doctors, medical science knows this. But the Bible's quoted it forever. You have what you say. So if you say you don't hear God, guess what? You're not going to hear God. Yeah, People but say that all the time. I, I just know. can't hear it. I, I know. Well, and, stop saying that. You, yeah. you have Bible that Good says you can't right hear. There. Good start. <laughs> I hear God. You wake up. You know what? I hear him more and more every day. I'm going to hear him loudly today inside my spirit. And I've never heard him audibly. You know, I just, I just, you know, there's a ringing and a hearing in my spirit inside of me, that, a knowing. Well, this is a gone. big area because there's people that give their life to Christ and they hear preachers like you and I and other people talking, other Christians talking about talking with God, hearing the voice of God, and they don't get it. They, they, they say, I've never heard anything. They hear the crickets. You talk about crickets. They, <laughs> they hear nothing but crickets. And sometimes by faith, you've got to press in. And I always have shown people this here at Accelerate Church. If you want to hear from God, open your Bible. Yeah, that's true. He's written these letters. And I know the Spirit of God is speaking today. But here's how you can always know that he's speaking to you. Not just because you believe it's him, right? but because it will line up with the Word of God. Absolutely. And if you are submitted to a pastor in, in a local church, wherever you live, you can go to your pastor or leadership and run it by them, and the Lord will confirm it with those that he's trusted as as someone who's going to give an account for your soul. That's what pastors will do. Yeah, you, they can They can listen to what you have to say and confirm it or tell you that's that's probably not the Lord. Yeah. And, right. you, you know, there's different ways God has set this up so that we can hear his voice. Oh, man, communicating communicating with God. I, I bet he almost, I'm almost sure of it, and you can probably prove it in the Bible, that he wants to communicate with us more than than we do him. Yeah. I mean, that's hard to believe, but, but I believe it's true. Yeah, and it I brings mean, life. Jesus yeah. said, man shall not live by bread alone. Yes. But by, out of every, every word that proceed... It proceedeth, I was going to say, that's King James, proceeds currently out of the mouth of God. Yeah. God's still speaking. Yes. And to hear it, we have to have a sensitive spirit. Yeah. And that's the only way you're going to hear from God. That's going to be the number one way he speaks to you all of your life. I remember, and I, I don't mean to always just reference Brother Hagin, but you're making me think about it yeah. here, <laughs> how he had a vision from Jesus, and the Lord Jesus told him, I'm not going to visit you this way and teach you anymore. Yeah. From this day forward, you're going to be led by your spirit, number one, your inward man. Yes. And you stop and think about it. This is the way he wants to lead everyone, not just a Brother Hagen, not just a Chip Brim or a yes. Jeremy Fowler. He yes. wants to, you listening right now, lead you by his spirit Yeah, and by speaking to you. Hey, Pastor Chip Brim, tell everyone how they can find out information on your ministry. Well, they can uh, go to championsforchrist.org. That's champions with an S, the number four, christ.org, and you You'll find all about Champions for Christ. And you pastor right outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, and we have a great youth rally in Branson, Missouri, and it's in July. And I'm telling you, it's the best youth rally. We've had Kenneth Copeland. We've had Billy Brim. She's there every year. We have generals come in, Keith Moore, Jerry Savell. And then, then we have a whole week of nothing but going to theme parks and, and just having a whole great time. So, That's great. Yeah. Well, check that out. Championsforchrist.org is the website. Yep. And you're listening to the Accelerate Church broadcast brought to you by our partners at Accelerate Church. If you want more information on us, I'm the pastor, Jeremy File. You can go to our website, accelerategechurch.cc. Thanks for listening today. We'll be back here tomorrow. You've been listening to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. And if you'd like a copy of this message for a loved one or yourself, please give us a call so we can get a copy in your hand. Our phone number is 806-418-8913. We also invite you to download the Accelerate Church app, which is available on your Apple or Android device. You can listen to previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, as well as watch live streaming at the touch of a button. Or if you're in the area and would like to stop by for a service, we would love to have you. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street in Amarillo, Texas. And our service times are Sunday at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We look forward to meeting you very soon.